Welcome to the E-Carrier Check Show. We got Nate and myself. We're just grinding. It's Wednesday, and I'm excited to be here, man. Uh, we got a, a special guest with us today, Desmond Clark. Used to be play for the Chicago Bears and, and now in logistics and doing what he does. Uh, before we kick into Desmond's story and just hearing some incredible, uh, just, just where he's at in his life, I want to talk to you, Nate. Yep. You know, we are here to try to bring some value. We're here to help people. Um, Man, I tell you what, it doesn't matter what I watch right now. Right. The news is negative. Every day, yeah. Every day is negative. How, how are you keeping your mind clean, man? How are you keeping your positive? Because you answer more phone calls. We've had, I looked, I went back and looked. I got to give you a little credit here. We've had 47 calls through this morning. Jeez. And yeah. just you answer those yeah. calls. How do you <laughs> bye, keep bye. it clean, man? How do you, you're a counselor. You're, you're this guy that's keeping people alive and positive. You know, give it to I, me, I try to be somewhat of a motivator. Now, I'm not the best. I try. You know, I can try to give a good halftime speech here. And, you know, Desmond might have to give me some tips. But, you know, I try to be positive with the people that I talk with every day because, you know, they watch our channel and they look to us for value, right? Mm. So I try to just be motivated and to help them. Um, and some, you know, honestly, some people kind of call in and kind of get me motivated too. But yeah. trying to keep my mind um, positive, you know, just learning – Take things day by day, right? Yeah. I get to chat it out with you, kind of talk through life. So, you know, there's a couple of things I get to do to kind of stay positive. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Obviously, the main theme uh, of a majority of these phone calls are, are sales. Yeah. How do I find an account? Um, and any carrier check, obviously, we're, we're trying to bring you leads and, mm -hmm. and do those things uh, in there. Um, obviously, we have Desmond on today. Man, I am super jacked to talk to him. Um, Desmond, welcome, man. Oh, man, I appreciate you guys for having me on. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Desmond, obviously you played in the NFL. You know, give us a rundown, man. Like, what, what did that look like? You know, when did you know? Actually, the question I don't even care about. I do want to talk about the NFL. When did you know that you actually were like, man, I have a little bit different of ability than most people to be able to, you know, do what I do to get to the NFL? When did you know that? How old were you? Um. It wasn't until after my junior year of college because I, I never really focused on that. It, it wasn't like I was practicing every day to go to the NFL. Um, my story of, of playing sports goes back to when I was young and I just wanted to uh, have a way to go to college. <laughs> so it was a way to get a scholarship. So I, it was it was my my junior year of, of um, high school when I said, you know what, I want to use this sport to go to college because I had promised my mom back when I was 14 that I would be successful. And at that point, it was all about going going to school, getting, getting a high school diploma, going to college, graduating college, and getting a good job. So that was my focus. Um, and then it wasn't until, you know, I had, had a pretty decent freshman year, caught 27 passes. Next year, I caught 61 passes. And then my junior year, um, in eight games, I caught 59 passes. And that's when I petitioned the NFL to see what my stock, my stock status, my draft status looks like. And they said if I was to come out after my junior year, I would be like a fifth rounder to um, either like a, a, a rookie free agent. And that's when I started thinking about, oh, man, the NFL is, is in the picture. But before that, it was just I just, I just want to be good for for goodness sake and, and get to and get to the next year of my promise that i made that's wild man i i love that i love that you were like mom i'm i'm gonna get to college and get a good job hey i i, I love that you uh took it to that next level obviously as somebody that's it's probably driven by goals driven by you know going hey i need to get to that next level how have you kind of stayed positive in that journey from a younger standpoint, not so much right now, but just how'd you stay positive? How'd you stay focused? I, I would love to hear because starting a brokerage and getting to the level that you did in the NFL, not exactly the same, but in some particular cases, you got to keep a good mental yeah. mental health standpoint. Yeah. And, and like you say, it's those goals and those things that's right out in front of you that keeps you, keeps you going. Right. And I, and I'm so thankful that I had that mindset of, Hey, I, I just want to, um, be the starting quarterback this year in high school. Oh, now I want to I want to be like one of the top starting quarterbacks in the state my senior year so I can get this scholarship. And then when I get to college, oh, I just want to be a starter. Okay, now I want to be one of the best receivers on the team. And then now I want to be the one of the best receivers in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And it was always that kind of a stepping stone, right? Where I wasn't looking at 
big, wide, you know, picture, something that I couldn't see the whole picture. I think a lot of times that that messes with people's psyche because it's, it just it just gets overwhelming. Um, and my mind frame was always, well, what's, what's next? What's the next thing after I accomplish this? So I believe just having that mindset, I don't know what, where, where I developed that from or how, how that came about, but that was always the way I kind of put my, put my years together, so to speak. I friggin' love that. That's so good. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I've been reading a lot of biographies, um, uh, about the invention of the car. And this has probably been one of the most interesting things is that when they first came out with the car, they actually didn't put lights on it, right? And if people didn't like to drive when it was dark, you just didn't mm-hmm. know where you were going. You know what I mean? And and then they said, well, hey, you know how to get home? What if we gave you lights? You can you can still get to your journey, but you didn't know where to go. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. uh, I love that you're like, hey, I got to find the next stepping stone. I got to find something that's attainable. And I'm such a fan of that comment. Nate said something just a second ago, and I got to hear this from you. Uh, honestly, what's the best halftime speech you heard? What's the first, maybe not even halftime speech, maybe the first game speech? Give us a rundown of that speech, man. I, I got to hear it from a high-level NFL guy here. Man, I'm, I'm going to hate to disappoint you, but I don't I don't even know. I, I have one from college, but I don't know exactly what was said. It, it came from Coach Caldwell. He was also the um, head coach with Indianapolis Colts and the Detroit Lions. He was my um, college coach at Wake Forest. And I just remember we, we had these tents because our our locker rooms were getting remodeled. So we were dressing in, in these big old tents as um, makeshift locker rooms. And I guess he didn't he didn't like the intensity in the room. And he called out somebody and that person didn't respond like he wanted them to respond. And he went hopping over tables and chairs and and Coach Caldwell, his demeanor is always calm and cool, but he went hopping over tables and chairs to get in this guy's face. And like I like I said, I can't remember what was said, but it was so intense that everybody got ready to go. And that was the year that um, Northwestern was coming off of their uh, Rose Bowl uh, appearance. And we were like lowly ranked. They were ranked like number 15. And we went out and smacked the hell out of them. And, and Coach Caldwell got us juice. I don't know if it was one of those things where he he manufactured it or it was real, but it was real enough to us because he never gets that animated. And like I said, he was jumping. He jumped over a chair. He jumped over a freaking um, table to get in this guy's face and, and basically get the rest of us pumped up. I freaking love that. Awesome. I freaking really love that. Uh, Ryan's jumping in here. Thanks. If you guys have questions, by the way, throw yeah. them in the chat. We're here to help and talk. Uh, Ryan throws out one, uh, not related, but what was going through your head when Hester took the opening kickoff in Super Bowl uh, to the house? Same thing that was going through everybody else's head. You know, <laughs> the best way to the best way to start off Super Bowl. Never been done like this before. Never have been done like that again. And obviously, when you get a great start like that, you just man, it's you, you just think that you're about to be a Super Bowl champion. And unfortunately, we wasn't able to to beat the Colts in that game. And, and talking about Coach Caldwell, he was um, Peyton Manning's coach uh, for that game. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. That's insane. You know, you know, Desmond, I, I'm, I'm curious because obviously, you know, in this industry, it's crazy, right? You know, before a game, you have to get yourself psyched. What are you doing before or your routine each day mm. to get yourself ready to go in this crazy industry? Um, the reason why I ask is we talk with so many new freight brokers that are either down in the dumps, not sure where to start. You know, what are you doing to kind of get yourself psyched for the day to get it going? So I got I got a couple roles, right? I got to get myself going and I got to get my team going also. But exactly. the first thing that I do when I get up in the morning is I just lay I just lay there for a minute. And a lot of times, you know, it's three, three thirty, four o'clock and I can't sleep anyway. So I'm just just laying there, just, you know, being thankful, just being quiet, just trying to calm my mind and, and just like I say, just be thankful. And then when I get up, typically I'm coming, I'm coming in this room that I'm in right now, my office, and I have my Peloton in here and I'm on this Peloton. Um, I was on here for 40 minutes this morning, got about a good 12, 13 miles in this morning. And so I try to get that part out of the way because I feel like that's the hardest part of the day. Right. And it also sets the tempo for the rest of the day. Like the rest of my day, like this bike kicks my ass. The rest of my day is easy after that. Right. So I get my ass kicked in the morning. Now I'm ready to fight everybody else for the rest of the day. 
And then from there, you know, I'm taking care of all of my all of my pregame stuff, right? Um, since we since everybody know I play football, like so I, I'm getting all of I'm getting all of my um all my invoices taken care of, this, that, and the other, all of that, all of that little stuff that man, I don't even feel like dealing with that stuff. I get all of that stuff out the way in the morning. And then from there, really now I'm I'm focused on my son and getting him ready to go, getting him um ready to go for school, make sure that you know, set the tempo for him. And then now I'm on the I'm on the call with my team and I'm getting them ready to go. I, I have something with them every just about every morning where I'm trying to get their mindset, because like you said, I mean, every day they they're making these phone calls yep. and, and I got and I got some young guys where they don't have a lot of a, a, a lot of freight right now. So they're out trying to get it. And you right. guys know out of 100 phone calls, you may only talk to two people. <laughs> yeah, and then one of those people is gonna be rude as hell and hang up on you. So to have that mental mind mind mindset to go out and be focused and just work on incrementally getting getting better, mm-hmm. I have to make sure that I'm setting the tone for them, making sure that I'm I'm tweaking and fine tuning and reinforcing and giving them that that positive mind frame that they need to go out and face that day in and day out. So that's that's really how my morning starts just about every single morning. Mm, right. And you have to, too. I mean, in order to be a leader and this will, you know, Mrs. Clark asked this, too. But in order to be a leader, you got to take hold care on, of yourself. Hold on. Let's back up. Didn't I tell you guys? Yes. Yeah, it it's a great question. <laughs> I love it. You know, I what, love it. Desmond, what does it mean to be a true leader? And how did you realize you are a leader? So just so everybody know, before we got on the camera, I was like, my wife is watching, so I'm, I'm almost sure she's gonna come in with a question. And I told you, babe, I know you. Um, <laughs> but, but what, what is a what is a true leader? So we were actually talking about this this morning. Um, people see leadership as like huh, um, titles, yeah. And and true leadership is not is not that. It's not about the name of anything true leadership is really service right it's about hey so i i have to lead five people in my company and basically i serve them every single day right in the mornings i'm serving them making sure that hey they have some type of motiv- motivational talk or, or some type of focus right and i have to get up and i have to think about that stuff and i have to put it together for them and then throughout the day my job is to make sure that i clear any obstacle that they may have so that they can work efficiently and effectively as they can. So I see leadership as, hey, yes, we do have to make decisions. We do have to set the tempo. We do have to cast a vision and all of that. But once all of that stuff is done, it's all about service. It's all about serving not only the people that work for you, but also your customers um, that, that that we're out there doing the work for. And, and, you know, it, it starts with the leadership. And as long as I'm I'm casting that vision and I'm setting the example, that's something else about leadership. You got to set the example. And as long as I'm doing that, I feel like every everybody will want to continue to follow me um, as a leader for this company. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I'm such a fan of uh, just the fact that you said it doesn't matter your role, you can be a leader in any, any aspect. And, um, I, you know, it's definitely leadership for me is just the ability to, to help and serve and, and change. And you can do that at any level. You don't have to have a title to do that. Um, I've never really been a big title guy. Um, in fact, funny enough, you know, I, I actually just call myself the VP of a V carrier check on (laughs) online. People don't really even know that I'm the founder, but I, 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 I believe, you know, Desmond, you're taking that, uh, that humble approach and, and going, Hey, how can I help with the obstacles? What can I do to help you? And, and I love that about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, not and, for and, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you sometimes it's because people hear that word humble, right. And they feel like it's, it's like people see that as like kind of being weak mm. sometimes because humble, meek and all that stuff. No, sometimes this, this, this type of leadership ain't humble. I go out and tell my guys, hey, let's go F and get it because we deserve it. We're good enough. And and and, and I don't care what the competition is. There is no competition. We're all, we're our own competition. And if you are making yourself better today, then you are competing with yourself and you're going to win. And, and it's like 
I want I want to set that not just humble, but also have that aggression with it also about no, nah, dude, we we deserve this because we <laughs> we put in the work, right? We do what we supposed to do. We serve the people the way that we serve the people. So when you get on the phone, you let them know you come across with that confidence that no, I got a I got a damn good team. And this mm-hmm. team, if you give us the opportunity, we'll perform for you. So yes, humble in a sense, but also aggressive as in being really sure about who we are and what we're about and what we can do for other people. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. That I was love this comment, right? You I know, do. work for me, you work with me. I'm right. a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. You know, not free related, but do you play fantasy football? Are you still involved in sports in that so, way? So talking about not being humble, um, everybody who I play fantasy football with, they didn't invite me back this year. Um, <laughs> and then a couple a couple guys that I do uh, pick and pros with, so you got to check us out on pick and pros. I told them before the season to um, add me to their fantasy teams, but since I kicked their ass all the time in the pick and pros, they didn't invite me to their fantasy team either. So I think people are afraid to to have me on their fan, in their fantasy leagues because, you know, it's – I, I just like to win and dominate, and I, I don't think everybody takes too kindly to that. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm such a fan of that, man. That is so good. Well, um, I'm curious, too, you know, Desmond, you know, you always have to educate yourself. You know, in the mm-hmm. NFL, you probably had to learn defenses, and you maybe had to switch up the offense. You always had to educate yourself against who you're playing, right? Now, what are you doing to educate yourself – in logistics in the trucking industry what are you doing to get yourself better mm. so you're, you're absolutely right um you can only teach what you know right, right. and and if 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 my lid and, and i'm talking right right from this book right here 15 invaluable laws of growth and they talk mm-hmm. about the lid um and that's that's my guy john maxwell and if your lid is only like a five you can only raise people up to a four right so i understand i i don't have I don't have a background in logistics. I'm only two years of studying logistics. So I'm always looking at podcasts. I'm always looking at stuff on YouTube. I'm always reading something about logistics. I'm always reaching out to somebody else in logistics because I understand um, my goal is to build a hundred million dollar logistics company. And I'm not afraid to say this. I'm not a hundred million dollar logistics owner at this moment right now right but i will i will continue to grow and then i say that but i also say this it you don't become a hundred million dollar company owner in five years you become a hundred million dollar company owner in your present state because mm-hmm. you understand what you need to do and where you have to go right so a uh, uh, um, oak tree wasn't always an oak tree it was a it was an acorn but then again, it was an oak tree because an acorn is an oak tree. It just had to grow, right? And that's what mm-hmm. I mean by, hey, I'm not that now, but I, but I am that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you truly got to take it, you know, day at a time. Truly got to. Yeah, it. big fan. I love John Maxwell, by the way. This guy has got the greatest books out there. Uh, they're simple to read. They're usually short, which is good for me. Um, yeah. you know, I, I can hammer through or listen to a lot of his books. Plus, I find his voice very calming, by the way. Uh, this is really random. I'll tell you something that's really random in my life. I've got, I got three kids and I, I literally made my daughter, um, you know, when she was younger, she just struggles with sleeping. She can't talk or shut her mind off. Weird. I wonder where she gets that from. And, uh, I would literally make her listen to John Maxwell sermons (laughs) to make her go to bed. So when she hears his voice, she's like, Oh, it's time for bed. Oh, wow. you know, yeah. which isn't probably good because now she goes to church and it's like, well, there goes that. You know, she's like, it's time to go to bed again. But, yeah. you know, he's got a very calming voice. I love that you're feeding yourself with John Maxwell. Yeah. You know what? What honestly, you know, you're going from the NFL. What transitioned you into logistics or what made you go into logistics? Um, because I, I wouldn't think, you know, for me, you know, I went from jewelry. I was selling at Tiffany's. And I went into logistics because I had a buddy, mm-hmm. right? I, I had a I, someone in my network was like, "Hey, come come work in logistics. We can tell you how to sell." You know, I, what made you transition into logistics, and how did you find this industry? A buddy saying, "Hey, come over here and do logistics. I can show you how to sell." Same yeah. thing. Um, yeah. my, my guy Brian Rice from Dre Dre Depot. 
So I was doing speaking and leadership coaching full time. And, and I've been able to get back into that now, but it was full time. He's seen a bunch of stuff that I was doing out there to market myself. And he had some ideas about us co-marketing. And in mm. those conversations, he started to tell me about Dre Depot and logistics and all this other all this other stuff that was going on within this industry. And I asked him this one question. Well, if you're only doing drayage and there's all these other modes of transportation, how much income are you letting fall through the cracks because you don't do that other stuff? And he said a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a month. Bing, light bulb. I don't want to work with you. I want to go and start my own my own corporation. And now we can toss opportunities back, back, back and forth over the fence to each other because you'll be doing this. I'll be doing this. And guess what? You could mentor me and help me build this company. And that's what happened. Mm, I love that. I, you know, it's so important to have mentors in this industry. Um, you know, in, in any aspect of life, I think, you know, whether it's just your personal or professional life, yeah, it's good to have mentors. I, you know, do you find that you have possibly grown past any mentors in your life or that you're starting to mentor people as well? What do you feel about mentorship? You, you have to have mentors. If you want to grow, you have to have mentors. And, here, and here's the thing. Here's the thing that I, you know, I, I, I'm back to doing speaking on a, on a regular basis because I have a great team here at Bear Down Logistics where I don't have to be here every single day. Um, matter of fact, we went remote. So I'm not with the guys like in, in, in the presence of them every single day. But I always tell people that get a mentor and a mentor don't necessarily have to be the person that's sitting down with you. This book from John Maxwell cost me twenty dollars. I have fifteen of um, John Maxwell, John Maxwell's books. John Maxwell is my mentor. Yeah, he may not know it, but all, all of the stuff that he's been saying over the years is is in this book. But if you can have someone that is, you know, above where you, where you at, but they are where you want to go, that's that's a surefire way of of growing. And it's one of those things, um, if you don't have somebody that you're looking up to, you're probably not growing anymore. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I, uh, I, I truly believe, and I, you and I are kind of in that same boat, that I, I could pick up a $30 history book and learn a $15 million lesson. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you've got you to find those people and build your own community. Um, I, God, I love that. I can't get enough oh, of you. So, so let, just for this, for this, and so you see Patrick Lencioni up here also. So I wrote my book, and then I was like, hold on. I, I went back and I read um, uh, Five Dysfunctions of a Team for the third time. I was like, man, there's a lot of similarities. And I was getting ready to uh, create my own leadership, uh, team leadership development program. I was like, hold on. Maybe he has something, right? Because I love, I love this guy. I love the way he writes. I love the way that he positions development for for corporations and leadership teams so i started researching lo and behold he has his own leadership team development course so instead of me recreating the the will all over i took elements of what he was doing to elements of what i was doing so since they were so closely related and buying i have about 10 of his books up here too might have cost me 20 uh 20 each at the most Two hundred dollars. I can guarantee you, I've made over a hundred thousand dollars from his mentorship. When I go out and I speak to other people, right, just by his influence on what he was doing, influence what I do when I'm out. I love that. So obviously, you know, speaking and, and trying to impact lives is is a big part of where you're heading. Uh, trying to grow your brokerage to this hundred million dollar mark and uh, being being that speaker. What is it about speaking that's the hardest thing? For you to do you know when when it comes to that aspect you, you know going from the nfl to, to now you're you're doing some speaking gigs i what's what's the obstacles in your way when it comes to that aspect of things just not just i can't be in in a hundred different places at one time yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you if you can um find out a way where i could time travel and i could duplicate myself and be be in more than one place at one time let me know other than that I mean, there there are really no no obstacles, so to speak, right? And the reason why I say that is because I would be able to speak more if I could get in front of more people and let them know what I do and hear their stories and and, and understand what they're trying to accomplish, right? And and 
that's that's the key to it for me is really just getting in front of people and, and say, OK, tell me what you're trying to what you're trying to achieve. And for me, it's all about and, and when it comes to my to my guys that work with me also, what's what's your goal? All right. Where's your finish line for this month? Where's your finish line for this quarter? Where's your finish line for this year? The name mm-hmm. of my book is Principle of Winning. If it if it has a goal, if it has an end game, if it if it has something where hey, I get to this point and I achieve something, I can help you get get there. Am, am I going to be the sole reason? Maybe, maybe not. But I can I can help you along the way. Um, and and for me, that's what I love to do. So when you say if there are there, you know, roadblocks, no, nah, it's just I don't get to do it enough. Um, even with my guys. I tell when when they come in for an interview, if you if you cannot articulate where you want to be want to be in a year, three years, and five years from now, I cannot hire you because I therefore don't know how to help you. So if you can't tell me what you're trying to accomplish, I can't tell you how I can help you. So I don't know how Bear Down is going to do that. So I got to move on to the next person. So there, there's really no barriers. It's just that I wish I can, I wish I can duplicate myself and be in more places to, to help more people in that way with, uh, with, what, with what I know, with what I can help them with. Right. Man, I tell you what, it is so important to just throw out ideas. Just you mentioned, you know, you don't have to get fancy here. You just get a piece of paper and write down, where do I want to be in 30 days in 60 days in a hundred days? And, and, three years, five years. It's so important to do that because if you don't, you're going to get influenced and lost along the way, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I love that Charles Mundy. Good morning. I'm glad you're on, man. This guy's the godfather of mentoring. Uh, Desmond, if you never met Charles, we'll, we'll introduce you later. He's really phenomenal. I love this guy. You guys should meet up. Um, I I know that logo though. ELLC baby. Yeah. Yeah, ELLC journey. It's uh, Exodus an Learning. Yeah, yeah, Exodus Logistics Learning Center. Okay. Yeah, he's so, a good guy. Yeah, you Yeah, you should absolutely. Um, I, you know, just taking it back to a, a personal level here, Desmond, you obviously, you have some kids. How, how, do you have any people in your family? Oh, man, we got a bunch of them. Between me and my wife, we have four together. Um, my oldest is 20, 25 now. Um, yes. And I have twins that's 20, and my youngest is 12. I love that. So uh, taking it back to a personal level, obviously you're, you have the opportunity to influence a lot of lives around you. How have you taken some of what you've learned in, in, in your entire life and in the way you read and everything and taken it to a personal level? Because I, I see some people, you know, they, they're good at the professional side. How do you transition that into your personal life and how do you coach those kids? Uh, mm-hmm. Even up to the 25 year old, they're a kid in my mind. Um, you and I are old. You know what I mean. We got. If you didn't shave your head, no, there's grace. Listen, you know? no, man, no, no, I'll, I'll let you be old. You, I'll let you have that. I, <laughs> hey, don't and don't tell people my secret about shaving my head. Like that's that's between me, you, and everybody else who knows. You don't, you don't need to discuss those type of secrets. <laughs> but get, give it to me, man. How do you how do you kind of keep you know coaching those people around you? Uh, when you're always giving back to those other people that are outside professionally, but personally, man, how do you, how do you, how do you coach with your wife? How do you build those relationships and kind of keep that, those, those people around you uh, with the same level of energy? Cause I think it's important that you, you grow right. at the same level. No. And, and the most important people in my life uh, are, are my family, you know, uh, my wife, my kids, and then, you know, moving out farther and farther with my family. But it's, it's, it's really the same thing. It's, and, and it's, instead of asking them where they want to go and what what they want to be and how they want to achieve that, you you help develop that. You help, especially like with my twelve year old, is that time right now that we have to start to help him, helping him to develop an outlook on his life. Right, mm-hmm. my twenty five year old, my twenty year olds, you know, we did the same thing for them. Hey, what what is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that you want to go for? And then the same thing that I do with my guys that work for me, my job as a father is to be the resource and clear the path for them, take away everything that that may stand in their way from them going to where they want to get to. Right. Mm -hmm. That's my job. 
um, as the leader of this household. That's my first job is being a leader of this household. And and to, to really bring all of this together, I personally believe that who you are personally and who you are professionally are the same or in my eyes should be. There's no principles that I take to um, to work that I don't also have at home. Matter of fact, all the principles that I take from work come from the principles that I have at home. Mm. Um, every, everything, like everything that I'm saying at home, because here, I guess if if it's if it's if it's the truth, it's the truth, and it doesn't change, right? So if I say if I if I continuously tell my my kids that hey, your word and your name is going to be the most valuable thing that you have in life, so you need to understand what you want your name to mean to you. And what you want your name to mean to other people well if it's true for them it's got it's got to be true for everybody else you know if, if i'm always harping on hey you got to build relationships and you got to understand how to relate and get along with people so in life you can you can build teams because nothing is accomplished um nothing great is accomplished done by yourself you're always going to need help you're always going to need other people's input um money or or muscle or whatever it is so you got to know how to build great relationships right and and for me i have a formula for that so if it's if it's good and if it's true for in my house it's got to be good and true for outside of the house also so yeah it's i don't think it changes it it, it stays the same and and sometimes i i say to myself i <laughs> sound like a, a a broken record because over and over and over and over. And sometimes, you know, I add to it, but the stuff that is core doesn't change. Mm. Yeah. So good. Yeah, well put. Well so put. good, man. You know, I have a, I have a good question here. Um, it's on my one of my lists here. I really wanted to get this out there. You know, what advice would you give other former athletes or just individuals that are considering a career change um, in this trucking industry? Um, what are some specific qualities or experiences that can make this transition I'm a little bit smoother for them. Um, I would definitely, definitely say this is something that I didn't do. Coming into it takes some time to know the niche that you want to be in, right? Because there, there's so much, right? And I, and I came in. Oh man, give me, just give me freight, give me freight, give me freight, and, and it worked out, right? But I think it could have been a much easier path if I would have came in and said, you know what, I'm only going to go after this type of freight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason why I say that, or I'm only going to do flatbed, or I'm, I'm only going to do this. And the reason why I say that, yes, you limit your options, but you get to, you get to uh, drill deeper, quicker, right? And then you get, you get more of a, of a, of a deeper knowledge for your sector of the industry. And that's something that I learned after, you know, seven months being in here in, in this is that, man, if I was just focused there, I would know much more about this subject matter now. And, mm -hmm. and coming into 2023, I was like, I still got so much to learn, but it's like, I, I for those seven months of 2022, I learned a lot. But it was, it was just a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah. It, boy, I tell you what. It, it, whether we're talking to a newbie or or somebody's coming in out of a professional, you know, career and coming into this industry, I think that's the the spot on advice of of in, find a niche, stick with it, and just become a mile deep uh, of that industry knowledge because it can just transition. You know, I knew roofing. Right. When I was a freight broker, I knew roofing and I could talk roofing on the inbound supply chain, on the outbound supply chain. And it didn't matter what roofing company I was talking to. I could tell you anything about roofing. It's really terrible, to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> besides mixing it in a pot and making a shingle, son of a gun, I could talk about it. I know all the ingredients, you know what I mean? And so um, I, I think this is really important that you niche into your industry. And I love that you that you've experienced that and seen that so quickly uh, with your with your knowledge. And one another thing that I would say, and, and I have all of my agents doing this going into 2024, they're all building their own individual business plans. Because I told them, I was like, going into 2024, again, 
how can I help you? Right. And I need to know how I can help you. And I can best help you if I know exactly what you're trying to get accomplished for 2024. And one of those things includes where are you going to focus your attention as far as niche um, niches? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, this is the time, right? You know, you've got 60 days before the end of the year. Um, I've never been a believer that you have to have a fresh start at the beginning of the year. You can start today. You don't have to wait till to for 60 days to get there. But I think it's really important that you take time to write things down for 2024 um, and, and talk about that from a standpoint of, is the economy going to be a factor? Sure. You know, are rates going to be a factor? Sure. But guess what? Your effort and the controllables, you can control and you can keep you pushing. And, and you've got to keep pushing. It doesn't matter what the damn news says. Put your phone down unless you're making cold calls and, and to quit reading that negative news because, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that can make a, an effect on you for sure. Yeah. Right. It's something that you can't control. Right. Just like you said, you know, I, I love what what my oldest brother, um, what he says, to, he's, he's at DHL and he's um, he's uh, getting up the ladder now to, to become the general manager. And you tell all his drivers control what you can control yeah. and if you can't control it let it go and bring it to me and if it's something that i can uh, obstacle or something that i could remove out of your way let me handle that you just mm -hmm. control the things that you can control right um you can't control the economy you can't you can't even control what the people are going to say when you when you call them on the phone on those call on those cold calls i, I got this young guy joseph i call him joseph the broker you know, he, he got down a couple of times because you know people can be rude and they can be assholes, right? And it's like, oh, dude, like, let that go. Like, who cares? Like, right. <laughs> uh, you can't control what those people say, but you're letting, it, you're letting it affect you. All you can control, which you're not, is your attitude. You're letting them control it by what they said and how they reacted. Now you're letting them control how your, your outlook on everything instead of you control it. You control it. So I'm a firm believer in that. Control what you can control. And that's how you, you you stay locked in and in the presence in the present and doing everything that you can to influence your outcome because you can't even control that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I uh, Desmond, you're a wonderful person. It's ha it's great to have you on. Obviously, we want to help uh, in your journey in any way. You know, how do people hear or work for you or or you know talk about Bear Down real quick? So bear down, like I said, we just went, we just went to um, all remote, right? Because after this year, I, I made the, I made my biggest mistake at the beginning of the year. Um, at the end of last year, I mean, we're just riding how high, high in what five months. I had three consecutive months of a hundred thousand dollars of revenue to end the year, in a in a tanking market, right? And so I look up and people, oh man, you're doing good, man, like. How, how, how are you doing that? And I and I started feeling myself a little bit. And so I was like, okay, let me just go higher. And it was only three of us. And, and, and for the last two months, only two of us. So I was like, let me go hire more people, right? And I started to hire more people. And then um, the guys who were supposed to be producing, they they didn't produce. They did produce. And so now we we hit this, hit this. I mean, I was bleeding, bleeding money at the beginning of the year. But um what i learned from that after seeing these guys i had one guy that was a 1099 mm. and he's killing it and nobody else is killing it so i had to cut my losses and then i built i built barry down based off of this 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 guy that i see that is doing what he needs to do and he he is what i envisioned so mm -hmm. we started to build Bear Down as a as a totally agent based organization, right? And that's tough. It takes the right type of person to come in and say, you know what, I'm gonna bet on myself. And if I don't if I don't do it, I don't eat. But I feel confident enough that I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go out here and kill it, and I'm gonna eat well. That's that's me, and that's who I can relate to. So mm -hmm. Bear Down Logistics is a is an agent based organization, and you know um, we're growing. We love it. Um, our our motto is our uh, process of greatness. Everything that we do is based off the process of greatness in this statement. Execute the details in excellence consistently over time. That's the process of greatness. You do that, and over time, you'll have people saying, oh, man, 
that's a great organization or that's a great agent. But the trick is you never get to call yourself great because greatness is the outside validation. You always have to stay in the process. So if anybody likes that and, and can get behind that, those are the type of people that I'm looking for. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that, man. So, so people, do they get on your website? How do people get in touch with you in order to join your organization? Everyone that, that works for me right now or works with me, I should say, um, all reached out to me through social media. Gotcha. Through doing an interview like this um, or, you know, one of my own podcasts. So, um, yeah, I'm not hard to find. You go to my yeah. LinkedIn page. My stuff is there. You go to my Instagram. Um, my stuff is there. Um, you go to my website, which is beardown-logistics.com. All of my stuff is there. In today's age, if you really want it, you you can find who you need to find. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I love that. Yeah. Man. Well, Desmond, thank that. you. You brought the house today. I'm. There's so many moments in this live that I'm yeah. gonna clip and just we're gonna put it on my shorts because yeah. it, it's amazing. Um, you really are a true motivator, a hard worker. So I appreciate that. And I know you shed some light on some people today. So bless your heart for doing that. Um, anything else, Jared? No, man. Thank you for being on. It, yeah. It's been just awesome to be present with you and be right here with you and just soak that in. So it was, it was a great time. So I appreciate you guys having me on, man. And we got to do it again um, sometime in 2024. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sounds sir. good, man. Guys, well, thank you for being here. Uh, tune in Friday. We'll see you all later.